So today we have these almost seemingly opposites in our Christian life. You could think of it as the dove and the fire, both images of the Holy Spirit. The dove is peace, is gentleness, is kindness. You see this in the second reading when St. Paul is talking about encouragement, hope, truthfulness, the promise that the Lord is our Savior. We see in the first reading, the wolf shall be the guest of the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the cow and bear shall be neighbors. You have all of the savageness, even in creation, just rooted out, and now there's a peace. But in order to get to that peace, you got to go through the wildness. And so we have St. John the Baptist in the midst of all of these readings about gentleness and peace and, and tranquility. And then we have this wild guy just crashing in. Sometimes we just think of John the Baptist, and sometimes with artistry, we kind of we make him a little more gentle. And he's just kind of there. He's like, okay, I'm going to baptize you, Jesus. Um, but read, listen to what it says here. It says, John wore clothing made out of camel's hair. He had a leather belt around his waist. This guy looked like a biker from Hell's Angels. Like, just imagine, he has this like wrestler, luchador, pro wrestler, just like giant leather belt. He's like just covered in like an animal skin. That's his clothing. I mean, just imagine if someone just walked in like that, you'd be like, whoa, like, who is this guy? His food is wild honey. I mean, he's like, he's like a bear. He just sticks his hand in the tree. He doesn't care if there's bees or anything. He's just like, boom, and he just eats. Wild locusts. I've had lo wild locusts. I've had them fried. They're kind of wild. Try it sometime. Get a little bit of John the Baptist in you. But this guy, he is just crazy. And I, I love the rendition in the Chosen series where they even kind of jokingly refer to him as Creepy John just because he's this kind of wild, wide-eyed, crazy-haired guy. And he's crying out, repent. And he's baptizing people in the Jordan River. And sometimes we don't fully like get the sense of how intense baptism is. Because normally, the way that we experience baptism, which is perfectly fine, is we take a little bit of the water, it's a little easier on the, on the babies, and we baptize them, gently just putting the, the water just over their forehead. But baptism actually means, like, dunked. And so it's like the experience that when you're at a swimming pool, and that big brother of yours says, hey, you want to come into the deep end, takes you and, like, dunks you under, and then picks you up and like throws you across like the, the buoys and you just crash into the deep end and it's like, swim. Like, it, 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 that's what baptism is. So just picture this wild guy that looks like a, like a wrestler. He has like honey in his hand, locusts. He's picking people up. He's throwing them and dunking them into the Jordan River. I mean, this is wild stuff. And I'm... I'm giving some of that intensity there to try to help us get out of the domestication of John the Baptist as just kind of this nice guy. Because then the Pharisees come, and he reads right through their actions. They're trying to get a nice political spot there so they can be like, hey, we're here, we're good. But they have just these broken, really corrupt hearts. And he speaks to them, and he calls them a brood of vipers. I mean, this guy is not a politically correct kind of person. He's not a nice guy, but he's kind in the deeper way, in the compassionate way, in the merciful way. And the Lord calls us, he died on the cross for us, not to make us nice people, mediocre people, mediocre Christians. He called us to an intensity of love, an intensity of radical discipleship. And what's amazing is that John is saying, I'm just the pre-show. I'm the band before the main act. 
but there's someone that's going to come that I'm not even worthy to hold his sandal, which is the, the task of a slave. I'm not even that worthy to even be like a slave. And this guy, you think that I'm dunking you right now. You think that I'm intense. I'm dunking you in water. But he's going to dunk you in fire. Baptize you in fire, which means to dunk, to throw you into the fire of his love. And then he uses these, these images here, saying, saying the Lord is wanting to cut away everything that's not producing fruit. If it's a dead tree, then cut it down. The Lord means the business of love. He wants to, he wants to transform your heart. And St. John the Baptist says this, he'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand. He will clear the threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So those of you who are farmers who have a background in agriculture, you know the difference between the heavier weighted seeds of corn, of grain, and then all the other things that we call chaff, the little pieces and flakes that just kind of float away. With this whole thing of this winnowing fan, this threshing floor, this dividing the wheat and the chaff, what they would do in the world of the Bible and they still do this within cultures, and they might even do it. Sometimes we maybe are more mechanized here, so maybe we've lost some of that sense. But they would take big, giant kind of plates, and they would put all the weed in it. And then what they would do is when the desert wind would come, they would throw it in the air. And anything that had weight and heaviness would actually come down and remain. Anything that was really trash would be revealed as such and would float away because it's not even worth the weight. Do you see how this intensity of what John the Baptist is saying, that this is what Jesus wants to do with us. He wants to plunge us into fire. He wants to take us, throw us up in the air, so that everything is revealed. And then that thing that we've been holding on to, that we've been saying, this is really part of me, we start realizing that it starts floating away. And the Lord says, let that go, because it's the obstacle that's getting in the way from me running to you with that deep, passionate love that's within my heart for you that I died for you, that I broke open my heart for you. Don't keep clinging to the chaff. Let it be burned away. This is what Advent is about. This is ultimately what Christmas is about, if you think about it. Sometimes we think of Christmas just kind of a cute little thing. But the baby Jesus, when he sees you at Christmas, he wants to belly laugh, pick you up, throw you into the air, and get all the clutter to float away. I mean, maybe you haven't thought of that in thing because a lot of times we're holding the baby Jesus. The baby Jesus wants to pick you up and throw you into the air and allow all those things that are just not giving you the peace that you're looking for to float away. And there will be those temptations to say, no, 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 but I need that thing. Trust the Lord. Trust the process. Because in order for us to get to the area in which we experience this peace, this dove, the gentleness, the tranquility of the Spirit, the Lord doesn't, he loves us too much to leave us on just a mere contentment peace, which is merely just the absence of war. He doesn't want that for us. He wants to dive us deeper because he sees gold within each of you. He sees the diamond in the rough. You know, I was thinking at the last Mass, that, that, that fun song from Aladdin. Riff raff, street rat, I don't buy that. If only they'd look closer, would they see a poor boy, no siree. They'd find out there's so much more to me. And God 
is saying that about you. He's looking at you. He sees the gold. He sees the diamond, but he sees all the stuff that's encrusted over that, that depth of what he's created. He sees you as he's created you. And all the other encrustations have come over like barnacles. And that's why the Lord wants to plunge you in fire. He wants to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. And he wants to pick you up and throw you into the air to bring healing to bring freedom and to bring a deeper peace. So who here wants the deeper love, the deeper peace? What are you willing to go in order to receive that? Because the Lord will not throw you up into the air unless you give him permission. He will not take away the obstacles that have been placed in the way unless you allow him. But if you say yes to him, be ready. Be ready for a scary thrill of a lifetime that will always lead to deeper peace. I remember in my own life, I was a, a young college student, and my girlfriend at the time, Christine, we were actually very, very close to proposing. And something in the midst of Lent, we knelt before the Lord, and just something was put on our heart, and we said, Lord, we want a deeper share in your love for us so that we can love you more. We want a deeper share, and I can't believe I even said this, in your cross so that I can love you more. And that same season, about a month later, the Lord crashed into my life saying, you could be a priest. And at that moment, I was actually really mad at God. And I didn't understand, why did he throw me into the air? Because that's a scary thing if you don't really know what the reason is, or being thrown into fire. I'm like, Lord, what are you doing in my life? It's a very painful process. But ultimately, the Lord led, led both of us to that vocation that we're called. She is beautifully married, has three wonderful children. They actually came to my ordination. I was able to pray over them, bless them. And the cool thing is we're still friends. And we're even able to say, isn't it interesting how the Lord threw us into the air? And we didn't like that at first. But it ultimately led us to a deeper joy and a deeper peace where our heart was able to rest in God. So be ready. If you ask the Lord to throw you in the air, it will be scary. But it's the only way to really experience life. So ask the Lord to trust him and let the baby Jesus laugh and throw you into the air and let all the chaff go away. Because when you land back in his arms, you will be more alive and more yourself, the diamond out of the rough.